the 7th of December 2024 saw the 9th African Hidden Voices annual Mzu Vugile Slabat Steve Khadebe Memorial Lecture hosted in Emangalisweni at the Century City Convention Center. This year, the lecture had three panelists who all deliberated on the theme. Imboni Dr. Uzulezo Khatebe, who was the keynote speaker, highlighted that African indigenous spirituality is the only answer to Africa uniting. Imboni emphasized that the topic of Africans uniting is not unique to this lecture. However, it is the first time that the topic of unity is tackled from a spiritual point of view. I would like to take this opportunity to congratulate the event organizers for pulling off Yet another Mzuvuki Leslap at Steve Khadebe Memorial Lecture. <clears throat> Every year, the caliber of this event grows in stature and prominence. And I am truly grateful to be invited and awarded the opportunity to address all these attendees. This year's theme, Power of unity as Africans. Sounds very simple, yet very complicated. Kivam suguti owa tagata umuntum nyama giam saba. It plays into my spiritual mandate, which is to spiritually restore the African people back to their original state. With that, I'm truly excited to hear what our speakers will deliberate as the best way to unite all Africans on the continent and the diaspora. The fight to restore unity amongst Africans stems from the fact that unity is one of the most for formidable weapons awarded to humanity. We have all traveled far and wide to assemble in this prestigious venue to discuss unity as the African people and the strides we should all take to achieve the goal of unity. It is not the first time, nor will it be the last time, that Africans convene to discuss unity. When Africa was colonized, the first thing that was taken away was her spirituality. Not tradition, not culture, not politics, not e economy. It was her spirituality. Why? <clears throat> because there is unity in spirituality. Everything else can never unify us. It is important to note that to the Africans, spiritual guidance is life. <clears throat> Once that was taken away, the Africans were forced to accept the replication of their spiritual guides. When you remove the original, people settle for fake. When you remove the original, people settle for fake. It was from this premise that Africans began not to understand each other. Thus leading to the point where Africans began to be cautious of each other. The doctrines of colonialism and missionaries were that the Westerner was the African's best friend and that the Africa, African was the African's worst enemy. Therefore, colonial and missionary invasions in Africa can be attributed to this chronic illness called lack of unity amongst African people. However, we cannot attribute all the credit to colonialism and missionary invasion. As Africans, we also played a role in who and what we are today. 
We defied the warnings of our ancient spiritual guides. Needless to say, we are here today and dwelling on our, on our failures will not assist us in, you, in building unity and a better Africa. In the words of one acclaimed African scholar, Dr. Jacob Olupano, the spirituality of the African must inform every facet of his or her life. I resonate with this statement in that I have over the years proven that when African indigenous spirituality is the foundation of the African's life, nothing can defeat the African and that the African can unite and build. You may ask, who am I to speak about the plight of the Africans? I am an African. <clears throat> and I am the spiritually verified spiritual guide who has been spiritually mandated to restore the African people back to their true, authentic spirituality. Amasosha, the Blue Nation, is an epidemic of a united Africa. An example of a united Africa. Ah, Africa! Ah, Africa! Advocates Kakane, who formed part of the three, spoke profoundly about the damage caused by Africans when they turned their back on their African spiritual roots. It's time to bring Elela and ask all of you, because I've never felt so comfortable. I've never spoken in front of an audience that is truly who I am. So, Ladies and gentlemen, when Umfetane <laughs> asked me to speak my office and all of us had asked that I would rather not speak anywhere because I cause controversy when I speak. And when this invitation came and its title, because spiritually we are connected, all of us, I agreed immediately because it talked about the four things I'm going to talk about. Babu Pungani, I think you stole my speech. <laughs> I am convinced now that you are gifted. Yes. <laughs> I, might, I may as well sit down and say you said everything else I prepared to say. Africa's time has come to redeem ourselves, to reverse our tragedies, and to show that the massacres and the genocides against us will never be repeated. And why did they happen? First, I'm going to talk about what I call, that's why I said, Babu Pungani, you stole my speech. The fundamental reason we lost everything was what I call despiritualization of the African person and spiritual castration of those colonialists found on our land. And once they had despiritualized them, it was easy to conquer them. Little is known. And I talk about this not to denigrate who we are. Is that during slavery, two things happened. White colonists would walk around hunting for slaves, men between the age of 15 and 30, to take them to the Americas and the Caribbean. But of course, that was assisted by the fact that as we continue today, we sold our own people. Certain chiefs and kings who had collaborated and were divided tribally, sold other tribes that they regarded as inferior and had defeated them. I raise this because that kind of betrayal by our own, that kind of ridicule 
And I'm sure about Pungane faces it all the time. And I think all of you in this room face ridicule all the time because you are proudly African. That is murder and killing we face. We get killed spiritually and emotionally every day because no one takes us seriously. Our healers that had been our closest to divinity, offering ancient wisdom and healing to our people, who would have offered counseling for them to resist colonial settler brutality, were disrupted, killed, ignored. Like prophets of the biblical times, no one listened to their message. I am blessed today and I feel comfortable with all the audiences, domestic and international, that I've ever addressed, that I address my own people. <laughs> I'm proud to be in the room of, with people who are not part of this, who have sincerely embraced being African, and there's no function like this. At the heart of this close-knit economic development must be the development of education systems whose base is our own indigenous knowledge systems. We must seek to develop our own currencies, circulate money and resources among the African institutions. And this, this that Bungane has done is the center of what we must start and replicate everywhere else in the continent. Dr. Tata, who traveled all the way from Germany, spoke about the importance of knowing your lineage and understanding your spirituality. We have to be aware of our callings, of our responsibilities, and what we are doing where at a particular time and space. I want to thank Imboni for already taking all of us, our words to talk about decolonization, 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 everybody saying it without talking about African spirituality. It is no coincidence. If you know the name of your mother, your father, your ancestors, you call its name. If you know the water, that produces you from the roots and the offsprings of your ancestors and you call its name, you remember where you come from. That is why the third assignment that we would do when we leave from here is question everything. Always ask the question. Because their word took out the way question and put belief and said, faith is what you don't see. No, we Africans have the spirit of seers. We see. I see my God. My God looks like me. Has an image of myself. My God has brought abundance that will unite, empower, and take us to the next level. Dr. Mteretwa spoke passionately about the African king's right to the land. 1994 is not equal to 1912, if you understand South African political context. First president of the ANC is Langel Balele Dube. He gathered the kings after the Land Act was passed on the 19th of June, asking kings, do you like this law? They said, we don't like this law. They contributed money to say, go to US, go to Britain, Portugal, France, and tell these powers to say, we don't want this as kings. The law of jurisdiction does not allow that a foreign law be used in a foreign land. So it is illegal. It is illegal that the Romans and the Dutch and the British and the French and the German and the Spanish and the Portuguese to come here, practice their law here, 
This is not Rome. This is not Dutch. This is not Britain. This is not Portugal. This is Africa. But our judges, our justices, they are good at applying a foreign law in a foreign land. And they are saying nothing about it. It's wrong. My lot is stolen from a king who presided in his traditional council and judging his matters. He, you say my lord because you are referring to a landlord. He had judicial powers to judge over his land. Where is the authority to judge matters of the kings today? They say kings' judgment are no longer admissible in court. Which court are you talking about? The Western Court. Okay, fine, we don't need it anywhere. Where is ours? Our powers were usurped. I'm in love with my voice. I can talk all the time. All, everything is up to you, down to me. Thank you very much. It would not be an AHV event without some entertainment. TRSH award-winning artists Steve Ovo and Scroof Ace performed for an enthusiastic crowd. Songstress Nonka, best known for her song in Tutuane, joined in and serenaded the crowds. The memorial lecture is positioned as a platform that deliberates the plights of Africans in the continent and the diaspora whilst offering viable solutions. I'm completely in awe of everything that has happened this morning. I, this award, um, I think I can put it up there with all my other awards that I got because there's no award that is bigger than the other. I see power of unity. They speak about being together and being united. And I've been part of the national team since way back. I was one of the founding members. Uh, first as a vice captain, then I became the captain, then I became an assistant coach. Then I became an acting coach, and then I became the head coach, which I'm currently still have that position. But I'm a South African first, and an African as well. And when I became the head coach, I didn't change many things, but I knew what we were good at. We are not going to compete against the tall Germans. We are not gonna compete against the British. But what we have is skill in abundance. What we have is what we call the Tsamayas and Ubuntu. That is what we have. And that is what I tried to inculcate into our team. And I was quite humbling this morning when people spoke about, advocates spoke, Mboni spoke about staying true to who you are. And I think that is what we forget. That is what we forget when we get into power. We forget who we are and where we come from. And that is the one thing that I said will never change about me. Because that is the time when you lose everything that you have and you are there for the wrong reasons. This award is not just for Desiree. This award is for the Banyana team. This award is for all the players that have come before. This award is for all the coaches that have come before. But Diana didn't start when I arrived as a coach. Panyana started way before that. We forget the first coach, Joseph Mkonzo, who took us to Olympics. It didn't happen when Coach Vera came into the country. It happened way before that because it's like a house. You lay the bricks and you build the foundation. And whoever comes after me, might have even more success because the foundations have been laid. But when we go out there to play, we know, I think it's 60 million now, right? Or is it maybe more? We know we're not playing for ourselves. We know we're playing for that 60 million who sends us their prayers, who sends us their messages of support. So whoever stands in front of us, we are not afraid because we believe in each other we also believe in everyone back home that supports us because we are South Africans. 
and we are African and we are not afraid of anything that stands before us. So I want to say thank you to Mboni. I want to say thank you to the annual decolonization lecture and I want to say thank you to all of you for this amazing award and I will treasure it forever and ever. Thank you. Let's go. Let's go.